Hey friend, in this video, I am going to be doing a watercolor tutorial of brrr, everyone's favorite flower, the peony. So, strap on your boots and get ready. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I am going to be showing you how to paint a loose peony in watercolor, everyone's favorite flower. Um, we're also going to be going over a few different perspectives, so make sure you watch till the end because I'm going to cover a couple different perspectives and bring it all together for a full composition, floral composition, including a couple different peonies from different viewpoints. And double make sure you watch to the end because we're going to be doing a giveaway. We're giving away the piece that I'm about to paint, so if you want to win it, which I'm sure you will want to, you definitely should want to, um, watch till the end and you'll learn how to win or take part in the giveaway. Let's do this. All right, so for this entire piece, I'm only going to be using one brush, my size six round, um, what's this called? Princeton 4050 series, Heritage 4050 series brush, linked below because that was confusing and I jumbled over all of my words. Uh, but the link to the, all my supplies are in the description. So check them, so check them out. So check them out. <laughs> so check them out. Um, I, like I said, will only be using my size six brush for this entire piece. Um, but first, before we start actually painting, um, let's talk about this flower. So I'm painting in a loose style. I'm not painting in a photorealistic style where I'm looking at a photo and trying to paint, you know, highlights, shadows, details, and making it look more realistic. Um, with loose floral watercolor, you're basically trying to emulate the shape and form and color of a specific, specific subject, whatever it is. If you're painting floral or animals or portraits, um, basically just emulating the vibe or the shape of that subject um, is your ultimate goal. The main thing that people forget about, especially beginners forget about when they're approaching loose floral watercolor style is that white space is your friend and to not overdo it. So we're going to talk about ways to incorporate white, white space um, to make it seem fluffier, the flowers seem fluffier because peonies have a lot, a lot, a lot of petals. Um, and it can seem really overwhelming to paint this particular flower in this style because it's hard to work around white space and know where to put it and where not to put it, etc. So I'm going to chat about that and we're also going to go over a few different perspectives with this particular flower so that you can switch it up and use a few different viewpoints in one composition. So let's talk about the shape of a peony. So whether you're painting the bud or you're painting it from the side or from the top, you have to, have to, have to think about the overall shape of your flower before you start painting it. So especially if you've never painted it before, you're not just slapping color on the paper and hoping it works out. You're really trying to emulate the shape of the particular flower. And the shape is going to alter a little bit here and there. Uh, depending on the perspective in which you are viewing the flower. So if you are, for example, painting a bud, so a peony bud, um, peonies are literally balls <laughs> when they start off as a bud. So they're literally a spherical ball shape. And if this is my stem, I would literally be painting petals to make or create a ball shape. And then as the flower grows, the petals peel off of that ball shape, kind of like you were to peel back peels of an orange. Um, so those petals start to peel away from the center of that ball and start to create a V shape or a cone. And so if I'm viewing a peony from the side and my flower is mostly open or all the way open, I'm going to be seeing a cone shape or a V. So if I'm painting a, flower, a peony from the side, I'm going to want to make sure that all my petals are pointing back to where that stem is because I'm, all my petals are joined at the base and they fall out as they work their way away from the center of the flower or where the stem is. So if I'm painting a peony from the side, you always want to create that V shape or the cone shape. And then the further down I bring the peony below my nose or the perspective towards uh, my chest, 
the more of that opening of that cone I'm going to see. So it's going to be more circular shape. So if I had the viewpoint of looking straight down onto the flower, so if I was holding the stem of the peony here and the, the petals were here, then I'd be seeing a more circular shape because again, we're having that ball kind of opening of the top of a cone. Um, and then again, if I bring it up to nose level or eye level, I'm seeing the side of the flower, it's a V shape or a cone shape. So keep that in mind as you're painting. This takes practice. So before we even start picking up our brush, you need to know that this takes a lot of practice. I've taught tons of students and I've taught people in person, online, etc. and everyone struggles with this flower. And the main thing that I can tell people is you just have to practice it and develop that muscle memory. And I know you hear that all the time, but it's true. The more you practice it, the more you develop that muscle memory and it kind of unlocks this part of your brain that you're able to see the flower as it unfolds and your muscle memory is just developed and you just start doing it without even thinking. So if you're new to it, don't get too discouraged. Maybe, you know, take a little breather, grab a glass of wine if you're of appropriate age and stay relaxed because it will start to look like a big blob or a fluffy cloud or a clam moisture situation if you get too frustrated or you overwork it. So let's get started. I'm going to be working with various colors in my palette. Usually I like to work with my Opera Rose and Scarlet Lake with some cadmium orange here and there and some yellow, lemon yellow deep. Um, but all the colors that I work with are listed in the description below so you can check them out um, and see the exact color list. That I'm working from. I'm not going to be calling out colors as I go. I might here and there, but this is more to get you to see the flower and understand how to paint it in different perspectives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush up with some water and I'm going to gra grab some color and let's start talking about the first pers perspective. Okay, so the first version of this flower of the peony that I'm going to show you is if you think about a peony and it's most beautiful in my opinion state is when it's mostly open it's got tons and tons of texture and fluffy, fluffy petals, loads of uh, petals, loads and loads of petals. Um, and I really want to show or emulate that essence <laughs> um, of the flower. So instead of painting these big teardrop shaped uh, petals for the flower, which is going to take up a lot of my center space where I want to show the density and the fluffiness of the, of the flower, I'm going to paint shorter, more staccato, uh, petals and just continue to add more and more of those shorter fluffier texture petals um, making sure that I am pointing all of my petals down towards the stem that same stem so if I have a petal on this side it's going to be pointing in towards the stem petal on this side is also going to be pointing at the same spot so that they could meet and touch the stem a lot of times I see beginners when they um, first put their petals down, they'll maybe put one that's pointing here and then their petals on this side will be pointing more at this angle. And this doesn't make sense. The, these stems are not in the same spot. So you want to make sure that they could meet to create a V shape. So remember, shape is huge, is so important. And then the white space with these fluffier, more dense um, peonies is really important too to show all individual in the more and more petals. So I'm gonna grab, I'm just grabbing some Opera Rose and Scarlet Lake with a little bit of orange. Um, you know, if you're wanting to get inspired with the color to use for your peonies, just pull up a photo of a peony and see what type of colors they come in. Um, I love the coral peonies. They're beautiful, but I'm just kind of going off. This is a loose watercolor. I'm not, you know, referencing a photo and getting it exact. I'm just going off of the colors I like to work with. All right, so I have my size six round brush and basically wherever the stem is that going to be on my flower, my brush is going to be pointing towards it when I make these petals. So all I'm going to be doing, and I'm making a V shape. So all I'm going to be doing is making these short little marks on my paper, making sure to vary the hue just slightly and maybe the value too. So I'm lightening my color by washing it off in my water for some of these. And if you're like, where's the V shape? This is the V shape, so it's a cone. We're not making a circular shape or anything like that. They're all pointing back to where this stem would be right here. So because I have this shorter front row of petals, I can continue to add this 
these fluffy petals behind it. So remember, I'm just pointing. I'm just pointing the tip of my brush down towards the stem and angling my brush to make that V. And as I get further away from this first row of petals, I'm starting to get lighter and bigger petals. And we're gonna get some petals that fall away down here. So now I'm pointing to the stem still and I'm just dragging my brush out. To make these petals, these big petals, I'm just pointing my brush towards the center where the stem is, pointing, pressing, and lifting. And then I might go back in and add some color while this is still wet to the base to make that pop or even the ends of the petals. So, but all of these petals are coming back to that one point where that stem is because all the petals have to grow out of that same stem. So these petals back here are just the tops peeking out behind the petals in front of it. And they're lighter because that makes it appear further away or behind. And I'm still pointing my brush, pressing and lifting off. And then from here, I'm just adding in any little areas that I wanna darken or maybe make a more bright pink color. But I wanna make sure that these initial clumps of petals are really short and thin and there's thin gaps of white space between them so you can really see how dense and fluffy the center area is. Okay, so make sure you stop yourself before you go too far. You can always come back to it after you move on to your next flower. Um, but a lot, I see a lot of people overdoing things and it ends up just being a big old puddle of color. So next we're gonna move on to a more open flower where you actually see the stamen or the center of the flower, pollen and all of that bulb um, of the flower on the inside. And so we're going to start with the petals around the stamen and so the stamen is where basically at the where the bulb is the base of that bulb is where the stem is and so all of our petals in this perspective need to be pointing inward so the outside of our petals are making a circular shape so if you have one area that's higher than the other or kind of lopsided it's going to feel weird and awkward so make sure you're trying to go for the overall shape of a circle or a sphere so we're going to do a slightly different color for this peony um, I've got some lemon, lemon yellow deep and some yellow okra, ochre, some yellow ochre, and I'm going to put a touch of opera rose in it for a more dusty rose color and a lot of water. So for this floral, I 
might actually show the lip of a petal too. So we're gonna have kind of this half moon shaped petal where we're just seeing the top of a petal. And then on top of that, we see the bulb of the flower and then petals behind it. This will make sense once I start painting. So for that lip or that half moon shaped petal where we just see the top of a flower, um, you can just basically point your brush so that it's at an angle of about 45 degrees and start thin, so no pressure, and then add pressure to it. So you've got this weird like leaf looking thing. And then from here, I'm going to be doing the same thing I did up here for this peony, angling my brush around to point towards wherever the center of the flower is. And I'm gonna start with shorter petals on the sides. Same idea, I'm just kind of pointing, pressing, and lifting up. And then as I work my way towards the center of the flower, I'm getting taller. So I'm starting short, I'm getting tall. And then come back down here to this side, point towards the bulb of the flower, and we're gonna be short again. So we're kind of curving up like a cone, top of a cone. And then I'll go back in to these and kind of darken the base usually or the tops of them. Wet and Wet is super fun and looser style floral watercolor because that's when you can start to show your own flair and the mag use the magic of watercolor. And then, so it doesn't just look like a poppy, we're gonna start pulling more petals. This is the center, this is the top edge of a petal here, and we're gonna point towards the center and pull out some more petals. Making sure they all point back to the center of the flower. further away the petals are, the lighter they are. making sure that there's white space between each petal, um, that it's not too spacious. It's kind of a thin gap towards the base of all these petals. And then as we go behind the, this layer of petals, you can see gaps between that layer and that layer or level. I'm gonna add in some yellow to some of these. and then blend that with a dry brush. Just kind of doing these circular motions. And then once this dries, I will go back in and add the stamen area. I don't want it to just become a big blob or blur. So we'll come back to that.
All right, so the third and final perspective that I'm gonna show you is just an actual peony bud because this is gonna help break up all the big fluffy texture that we're seeing in a composition. Um, and it's a little bit easier to start with um, painting these buds. So if you're frustrated or feel overwhelmed with the two that I just painted, start off with just these um, more simple uh, buds of the flower if you like. Um, but same idea, we're gonna be pointing towards where the stem is. I'm having, I'm gonna have a couple buds pointing towards me, kind of towards this bottom corner of my paper. Um, and so my stem is gonna be somewhere up here and I'm gonna make sure my petals are all pointing towards that stem and making a V still. Um, but for these petals, they're going to be longer and they're gonna curve in on the outside. So I'm making C curves on the outsides and my middle petals are going to be taller than my two outsides. So I'm making C curves and I might go in and add a slightly different color here and there. So there's one bud, let's do it again so you can see it again. So let's say my stem is coming this way, point towards your stem, press and curve in. Point press, and then point towards the stem and curve in. For most of my petals, even for these flowers, I like to have the base of them kind of come to a point and then they kind of fluff out, kind of like a teardrop. So I wanna make sure you got those nice points in a lot of your petals. Maybe add some orange for our last one. All right, so I have a great area of white space covered. This is why I love painting peonies because they can take up a really big chunk of white space, which if you struggle with composition can be the biggest area of, of struggle um, is knowing where to place things and having gaps of white space to fill in. So when you have these big chunky flowers, they kind of take up a lot of that room for you. And so I paint all my big florals first and then I plug in some buds. And then now we're going to start painting stems and I'm gonna show you a little like larkspur or delphinium type flower in a different color that you can add to it as well. So in terms of stems, a lot of people struggle with where to place the stems. Now that you have the flowers on the paper, where do you put the stems? Um, and when you're painting the actual petals of the flower, what I just showed you, you're pointing those petals towards the, the stem. So look at your petals. Again, if you're not familiar with this style and you don't have a lot of practice, your petals might be pointing in tons of different directions, and so that might not be very helpful for you, which takes practice. But if your petals are all creating a V shape or they're all pointing back to one spot, that's where your stem should be. And then when I have basically a composition, it really depends on how it's being laid on the paper. So am I viewing it so that like I'm holding a bouquet or is it just kind of random all floating up in space like I would have just lay a bunch of flowers on the paper and hope for the best. Um, and so for this particular layout or composition, it's essentially like someone holding a bouquet. And so we have buds pointing this way that tells me that the stems are curving in towards me like this. And then we have two flowers kind of off shooting like that. And so look at the direction the petals are going and then pull that direction out or down from the petals and into the stem. So again, I'm still using my size six brush and I'm going to grab my green color now, which is going to be sap green with a little lemon yellow deep. All right, so I'm gonna start with these buds over here and then I'm actually going to show you a delphinium type bloom. But this first bud here is curving that way. So I'm pulling that. So I'm pulling that curve out and down with this stem and this one here and that here. 
So they're kind of falling towards me. And I'm gonna fill in those gaps with, with the actual follow through of the, these stems once I add the rest of my floral. So I'm gonna use cobalt blue and a little bit of phthalo turquoise for this flower. And basically just how I was using petals and all my peonies, I am going to be doing the same thing, but my petals are all going to be pointing towards the center point. Um, so they're all meeting the stamen here. All right, now going back to my yellow green color and let's pull out a leaf from this flower. So here's the center of my flower. The stem is gonna be right around there and we're gonna have a, a stem or a leaf that's coming out of that. If you're not familiar with how to paint leaves, I have a great tutorial that will link for you. So some of my stems are going to be overlapping leaves and I'm making sure to vary my hue, size, and value of all of my leaves so they're not all the same. And then at this point in the painting, I'll assess where color is landing. I got two spots of blue and I'll want to add a third to kind of offset, offset that pairing.
poke in some yellow. starting to close in on finishing this piece and the last touches we need are the stamen of that flower so to do that I'm gonna grab some yellow ochre for the bulb with a touch of lemon yellow deep and I'm going to create this half moon shape Needs a little bit more yellow ochre. Like so. And then some burnt umber mixed with Mars Black for the stamen, which I'm just rotating my brush around. Like so. And final touch, the pollen will use Lemon Yellow Deep by itself and the tip of the round brush. Like so. You can use gouache, Lemon Yellow Deep and gouache um, to make it more opaque and to stand out more if you want. But I really like the look of watercolor. And then from there just kind of take a step back and make sure to not overdo your painting. Um, assess if there's any gaps of white space that feel awkward and need some fill or if there's landing of color that doesn't make sense or feels too lopsided um, and kind of go after that. You can darken some of the floral, some of the petal areas if needed to make them pop. Like I might do that to this one here. But then from there, you can call it a day. All right, so that was fun. I hope you had fun watching this video and I hope you get to painting real soon, all the loose style peonies. Um, to enter the giveaway to win this wonderful piece that I just painted, uh, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below with your favorite part in this video, whether it was the different perspectives or you learned something new. Just comment below what your favorite part was, and I hope you get to painting all the fun peonies soon, and stay tuned for more fun watercolor videos. We also have a free watercolor download for you, an ebook. So it's a free beginner's floral watercolor ebook linked below in the description, along with all the supplies that I use, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you grab those and enter the giveaway. Like I said, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and comment below with your favorite part of this tutorial um, where you learn the most. And stay tuned for some more fun tutorials and videos coming soon. <laughs> stay tuned for more tutorials and thanks again for watching.